In this video, we're going to show that for any matrix A whatsoever, the combination A transpose A is a symmetric matrix. Now we're going to show this in two different ways. In the first approach, we'll deal with the individual entries. And the second approach will be based on matrix algebra. Both approaches are very insightful and each has its own advantages. Let's start with the entry by entry approach. And the first thing to realize is that when you're multiplying a matrix A by its transpose, the two matrices are necessarily compatible. Their inner dimensions match. Because if the initial matrix A is 3 by 2, then A transpose is 2 by 3. And the inner dimensions 3 necessarily match, so the product is always compatible. But the outer dimensions 2 and 2 match as well. So the resulting matrix is always square. Good start. Now let's determine the individual entries of this product. Let's see. The first entry equals 1 plus 4 plus 9. So it's 14. Let's now determine this last entry, which is 4, excuse me, 16 plus 25, 41 plus 36. 77. I hope that's correct. 77. 77. All right. Now let's determine these two entries and hopefully they'll be equal to each other. Let's see what we get. Four. Let's start with this entry. This entry equals four plus 10 plus 18. Once again, four plus 10, that's 14, plus 18. 32. And this entry equals 4 plus 10 plus 18. And did you hear how it's the sum of the exact same numbers? So 32. This matrix is indeed symmetric. And you saw exactly how it happened. Now, can we summarize in words why these two entries are the same? Well, that's because this entry is the dot product of the first row here and the second column here. And this entry equals the dot product of the second row here and the first column here. But those were the same vectors. Why? Precisely because this matrix is the flip of this one. It's the transpose of this one. So the rows of this matrix equal the columns of this matrix. So in describing where these entries came from, we don't even have to look at A transpose. We can simply look at A and state that these entries are the dot products of the first column and the second column. Except this one will be the dot product of the first column and the second column, and this will be the dot product of the second column and the first column. And of course, the dot product doesn't care about the order, so predictably, these two numbers are the same, because they represent inner products of the, of the columns of the matrix A. In fact, you can say that all of the entries of this matrix represent the pairwise dot products of the columns of the matrix A. Once again, you don't even have to look at the matrix A transpose. You can simply concentrate on the matrix A itself. And if the matrix A had, let's say, 10 columns, doesn't matter how tall they are, the resulting matrix will be 10 by 10. Because among 10 columns, you have 100 combinations of pairs. You can take first column and third column, or third column and seventh column, and so forth. There are a hundred combinations matching the 100 entries of the resulting 10 by 10 matrix. And that 10 by 10 matrix will be full of the pairwise dot products of the columns of this matrix. And you can even say what the, what the entry, let's say, in the fifth row and eighth column will be. It will be the dot product of the fifth column and the eighth column of this matrix, and it will therefore match the entry in the position 8, 5, as opposed to 5, 8, because it will be the dot product of the same two columns. I don't know how many times I can repeat the exact same thing uh, when talking about this approach. So I think this approach makes it very clear that the resulting matrix is square, and that the corresponding entries across the diagonal match, so it is symmetric. So this is a very insightful approach that really shows you what happens 
uh, with individual entries and proves the symmetric property of this matrix that way. Now here's an alternative proof based on matrix algebra and it's much shorter and it's very powerful and you must absolutely must master this approach because it will be used on several other occasions. Well, in proving that this matrix is symmetric, let's take its transpose and see whether its transpose equals the matrix itself. If the transpose of the matrix is itself, then by definition it is symmetric. Let's see if that's the case. So I'm looking at this matrix, which is a product of two other matrices, and I'm evaluating its transpose. And by the formula we just derived, it's the product of the individual transposes in the opposite order. So the first matrix on the right will be the transpose of the second matrix. So it will be A transpose. And the first matrix will be the transpose of the transpose of A. And I'll do it once and once only. I will actually write this funny symbol. It's the transpose of the transpose itself. And it's not hard to realize that if you take a matrix and transpose it twice, transpose it and then transpose the result, you will end up with the original matrix. Because after the first step, the rows have become the columns. And after the second step, the columns went back to being the rows. So the result is A transpose A. And lo and behold, it equals the original. I was fearful of running out of space, so I made this A too small. So let me make it the size that it deserves to be. Now it's a little too large, so I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. So the result is the same matrix. So A transpose A is necessarily symmetric. Now once you master this approach, I think it's shorter and actually more powerful. Here's an example of another statement that you can prove much more easily with this bird's eye view approach than you would if you were to argue it entry by entry. You can prove that if you were to stick a symmetric matrix between these two matrices, the result is once again a symmetric matrix. It's a generalization of this result. So if you were to consider A transpose M A, where A, excuse me, where M itself is a symmetric matrix, then this product is also a symmetric matrix for any matrix A compatible in the product sense with the matrix M. Well, I think you should pause the video and try this out on your own and it will work seamlessly. But now let's see how it goes. So it's a triple product. So the product, the transpose of this product is the product of the individual transposes in the reverse order. So first we'll have A transpose. Second we'll have M transpose and because M is symmetric, M transpose is, itself, is M itself. And finally we'll have the transpose of A transpose which is simply the matrix A itself. And lo and behold, one more time, the resulting matrix is the same as the original matrix. So this original matrix must be symmetric. What a very nice approach and way to prove it. And of course, you must see that this, that this product is a special case of this product where the identity matrix plays the role of the matrix M. So there you go. We have just proved in two different ways that the combination A transpose A and more generally A transpose M A where M is a symmetric matrix, is necessarily itself a symmetric matrix.